Hi everyone, Ms. Schlarman here, and today we're going to talk about origami. Origami is the art of paper folding, and it's from Japan, and it's kind of just blown up, and it's, it's amazing. All right, so here's some examples that we're familiar with, some different origami folds. And representing this gentleman is an origami master and he's got some of his stuff around him and he really brought it to the rest of the world and uh, made it popular here we have an artist that is still working today that's like him yesterday and his stuff is so cool i can just like google them and watch his videos forever they're just like in time lapse and they go Brr, and he makes them and they're just amazing work uh, Robert J. Lang is an origami master, but what I really like about him is that he was a mathematician first, um, and then he set out to make books that were readable and understandable. So if you Google him and look at his books that he's produced, and his artwork's amazing as well, but it kind of makes it, it, sometimes it's hard to understand those diagrams and learning the step-by-steps. So he's awesome at showing how he explains it really well. Okay, so this story, Sudoku and the Thousand Paper Cranes. You can get the book, you can read it, um, look into it more. But basically from Hiroshima, when the bomb dropped, um, she was two years old. And then they later came down with Lacoon. Sudako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. It's a symbol of peace all around the world. So basically, when Hiroshima was bombed in World War II, people were affected by it. So she was two years old. Well, as she was getting a little older, she got very sick. And basically, in the fifth grade, she ended up passing away. But the legend goes is that if you fold and make a thousand paper cranes, then you will have uh, good wishes granted to you and, and, and good health. So what it was is the beauty of this is she started making her cranes and then she couldn't make all of them. So the rest of her class came together and started making the cranes. And then from there it went on to where it became a tradition and a symbol of peace where you would make these thousand cranes. And this statue, every year they will bring all of these cranes to it and represent that symbol of peace in the world. And that's why one of the reasons I love the origami crane so much. And we are going to learn how to create that origami crane. So here's um, a step-by-step -step one. And sometimes when you look at these, they get a little tricky, like step one, how you're gonna do it. I, You can always pause the video and just look at these steps. You can Google other steps on how to do the crane. I am going to now show you in fast motion and then I'll slow it down and go step by step with you in how to create the origami crane. Hi everyone, Ms. Schlarman here and I've got lots of various origamis here sitting around that I've made and made with students and um, we're going to slow this down and I'm going to show you how to create the origami crane. Okay, it's so wonderful. Okay, so move that all aside. Obviously, this is in fast motion, and I think this is good so you can have a visualize of what we're actually doing, how many steps are involved, where it's going. Of course, this is super fast, um, so I am going to slow it down, and I'm going to show you step by step. But I also think it's very important to see so that your mind already has a working idea of where we're going and what we're doing. You need to remember just to have patience, take your time, and we're going to do great. So let's start with just a standard piece of paper. Now, in origami, they traditionally use square pieces of paper. So to create a square from just a regular piece of standard copy paper, you're going to fold it down onto the side to create that triangle. Now, this, what we're gonna do is take scissors and we are going to carefully cut off that extended rectangle to make it a square. So a square has all four sides that are the same. So now we all have eight and a half by eight and a half by eight and a half. 
Now to help you with this, I'm also going to use a highlighter and talk to you about the folds that are created. You do not need to use the highlighter. I'm using the highlighter so you can see what we're doing because it's the, the screen. Now this is called a valley fold because it's going inside and it's from corner to corner. So more of like the triangle. Now we're gonna do the other triangle. So you're gonna fold it over to this side and you're gonna notice that these corners was what we wanna go. We wanna go corner to corner like so. So now that's the triangle. You open it up. I'm gonna just highlight it so you can see which way the fold is and where it's at to creating this uh, crane that we are making step by step. You can see the highlighter of how I did it when we were going from there. So step one is to create basically a triangle that way and a triangle that way. So you have your two valley folds there. Next step, so you might wanna pause in between. So once you get to this step, you might wanna hit pause. And I might even say pause, go do it, okay? Now, this one, I'm gonna flip it over. So now my orange highlighter are on there, or my valley folds are facing the table. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it in half like a book. So I'm just taking this, and I'm trying to line up your edges as best as possible. And once you have those corners lined up, you can hold it secure with these two things and then draw your finger back and then crease it. And you really wanna make sure your creases are nice and crisp. Now I'm gonna use a different colored uh, highlighter. So that's the orange. And this one is the pink. Now notice the pink is on the opposite side of the orange. You don't have to do this, just know where your folds are. Once I have that one, I'm going to fold it this way as well. Once again, lining up those corners. The more precise you line up those corners, the better your overall origami is going to look. It's all about precision. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead just so that we can see it. You do not need to do this. I'm gonna put that in there so we know. All right, so what I have is I have folds that are going, valley folds going in. Mountain is when these are considered mountain because it's going up. So a valley, both of these are the pink is valley, okay? And then over here on this side, the folds are going this way. Now the reason I want you to do this is because you're gonna see once I have it, um, it's gonna kind of, I have the pink sides so that I have the ones going from the sides to the sides looking up. And then I have these that are sticking up. So it looks like a diamond in front of me. I'm going to take the folds that are sticking up and I'm gonna bring them in and then I'm going to place it down and then it's going to go fairly smooth just like so. Okay, let me show you that one again. So. I have a diamond shape in front of me. I have the cross right here. So not the triangle, but just the cross one right here. And these folds are already sticking up. So they're going to just lay down on top of there. This one should lay down and then you crease it. Okay, go ahead and hit pause and get caught up, but it should look like this. It looks like a diamond in front of you. All right, the next step, you need to know where your opening is. Okay, so this is my opening. That's what I'm gonna make a point. So here's my opening. You don't wanna do the one that's closed. You want the one that's open. And I like to make a, put my fingernail there and I'm gonna fold along that center fold that I created, okay? So it's folded there. And in origami, most things are symmetrical. So what I do to one side, I'm gonna do to the other side. So I'm gonna take that one and fold it along that center fold like so. Now, I'm going to now flip it over and I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So in origami, a lot of things are done in fours. So you'll notice that we did the four folds in the beginning now we have four folds on here 
and it's a lot of repetition and symmetry being used. Now, go ahead and hit pause and get caught up. Now we're ready for the next step. You're gonna take this top part and you're gonna fold it down. And that's creating that crease. Remember, precision is very important. You wanna keep sure your creases are there. Okay, go ahead and crease it and hit pause. Now we're gonna come up and I'm going to basically open up these. Okay, watch this first. Don't try it to do it with me. Just watch. I'm going to take this, I'm opening it up. Now notice these folds are facing towards you. You wanna make those folds reverse. So I like to make them reverse by running my fingernail kind of along it and it makes that fold pop out the other way. And if it's not doing it easier, you might wanna crease it some more before you try to do it. So then I'm basically reversing that fold reversing that fold and it's opening this up. And when it opens up and that fold completely reverse, then you can smoosh it down and completely get it creased. Okay, and like I said, what I did to one side, I am now going to flip and do to the other side. So hit pause if you need to. Let's watch that one more time. So it looked like this. Open, 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 reverse folds, and squash. Flip it over. Same thing we did before. Fold this down so that you're creating that crease where it's also going to fold. If you don't do this part, it doesn't like to open as well. So then you open, open, open. Find this right here. Okay, there it is. See, that's where it's folding back on it there. If you forget to fold it down, it, it wants to do this. So you wanna make sure that's folded. Open it up. Now I have to reverse, reverse this fold. So take it, reverse this side. Okay, and the more you do it, the better you get. So just keep trying. And then fold, squish it down. Okay, if you need to, hit pause. Okay, so let's see that one more time. Go down, up, open, open, and squish. So now I'm at this next step. It's important to know where the opening is. So this has no opening. This is split. We're going to make it a super point. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna notice you have four of them. You have this one, this one, then two on that side as well. I want to make this fold go to the center line. So I'm going to make this a super point. And notice I'm only folding one of them. I'm not folding both of them, one at a time. So it folds that way, kind of like a paper airplane. Then this one also, you wanna to fold to that center line and sometimes I like to draw my, take my fingernail and kind of point it down there so that I know I'm trying to get as crisp as I can and lined up as well as I can and then crease it as well as you can. The better your crease are, the more accurate your origami will be. So I have those two sides. Well, what you do to one side, you wanna to do to the other side. So flip it over. And now here's the super point. Make sure you do it on the same super point. This is the solid, so super point here. And I'm going to come over and I'm gonna fold it into that center line, like so. And then what I do to one side, I'm gonna to do to the other side. So basically it's the same fold only four times, you know, going into that center. So that makes the step seem a lot easier when you realize you're repeating the same step over and over. All right, now, the next step. So you might wanna hit pause. You're gonna go take, this is the open side, right? You have to think about that. Notice how you've got the, the four little sections, right? Four sections, one, two, three, four. Well, what I'm going to do is I've got my finger 
kind of put in there and I've got my finger over here, my thumb right here. I'm gonna fold these two up to each other, okay? And then these two on the other side are gonna fold to each other. So then I'm folding them on each other and I'm gonna crease it down, crease them down, okay? So now it kind of looks like a rocket ship. That's what I kind of think of it as, is a rocket ship. All right, so now that I have the crease, let's show that again. So I had, basically, it looked like this, right? This is what it looked like. And then I separated those two sections, and I folded this one together this way, and this one to this way. So then I have a rocket ship. Now, hit pause and get caught up. This one... Fold, you know, fold this one is going to go folding down up to the tips of here. There's also, it's going to stop you because that's where it's connected still. Crease it, and then flip it because what you do to one side, you do to the other side. Fold it up and crease it. We're almost there. Look at this. So now I have it looking like this. You're going to pick one of these to be the head. Okay, we're getting close. You're gonna get that little head. So one's the tail and one's the head. Pick one side and bring it down, not all the way to the bottom, but just a little bit. Crease it, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that same fold again. Remember how I had my finger in between? I'm gonna push the fold these guys in, okay? Gums up like this, and this one gets folded in on those, those lines of symmetry are really, really important. It's very symmetrical in this origami. All right, now I'm gonna bring it to life. Go ahead and hit pause and get caught up. To bring it to life, you're going to do a pull out. Okay, you pull out that neck right there and you do a squash, you kind of squish it, it's got a squash fold. Then you gotta pull out the head from inside to where you want it to be. And then you pinch it, it's kind of the squash, squash fold. So let's now pull out the tail and squash, there's your squash fold. All right, how it's coming, you can start to really see it now, can't you? Okay, the next step, you are going to take the wings and open them up now, there's this little air here, and you can, if it's not wanting to, like, flatten out, see the difference here where that's air, you can blow into the bottom like a balloon and puts a little, put a little air in there, and that'll cause the, you can get your the back of the swan to kind of bubble up. And there you have your, your origami crane. Okay, some people, I like to kind of curl my wings just a little bit to give it its own little flare and let them stay there. But there you have it. That's how you make an origami crane. All right, good luck. I can't wait to see them all. Bye. I'm back. P.S. If you want an extra challenge, get a smaller piece of paper and see if you can make a tiny swan. All right, can't wait to see it. Bye.